Dan Stein. Well, it's a question of where you are, where, uh, when you're detected, and what the current policy is. And in fact, what our enforcement policy is right now is a big fat topic, because in the end, what happens to an alien crossing the border illegally, who's apprehended by the Border Patrol seconds after crossing, is quite different from what can happen to an alien who's, say, picked up by local police for drunken, uh, dr drunken driving. And uh, the question of whether or not they're actually going to be turned over to Immigration Customs Enforcement for proceedings and an order, what they call an order to show cause. Uh, they're put into removal proceedings at that point. They may or may not be detained. They ask for deportation hearing. Then there's a procedural process that kicks in that can go on for a very long time, depending on how many motions to reopen and reconsider the alien files and how many levels of appeal he or she decides to pursue. But more importantly, under the current directives of the Obama administration, there is virtually no, zero, none, nada, no interior immigration law enforcement, no interior immigration law enforcement at all. Unless you are a serious independent felon committing independent criminal offenses that are not related to, the, to your immigration law violations, or you're a terrorist. Basically, the so-called Morton memos virtually suspend interior immigration enforcement and give directives to state and local police not to detain, not to um, uh, expect ICE detainers for aliens who are so-called not enforcement priorities, which basically means only bad, really bad criminals. Well, you know, that's not what the law says, and so it's hugely controversial because in the end, reform, what reform means is actually fixing the problems we have today so they don't recur. And we'll talk more about enforcement in our next hour, focusing on that uh, key word of reform. What would you like to see done, Dan Stein? Well, we'd like to see, actually, the full-scale implementation of recommendations that go back 35 years from commission after commission after commission that have actually explained to Congress and the American people and presidents what's required to actually deter illegal immigration. We would also like to see, finally, the elimination of the, of the family preferences that create chain migration. Business lobbyists want a more flexible, nimble system to bring in very highly skilled people. Uh, other groups have their particular pet issue, but in order for the American people to be able to govern the overall cap and set annual ceilings and make numerical choices, you've got to eliminate the chain migration system that's continually driving and fueling large-scale, low-skill immigration. So we'd like to see those, those reforms and, and many others we can talk about. Here's what Jeff wow. says on Twitter. The problem is that Obama doesn't just want to give citizenship to qualified foreign workers and entrepreneurs, but he wants to give citizenship to all illegals when there are not enough jobs for the people we have here legally right now. Dan Stein, should there be priorities uh, for immigration? Well, naturally, the threshold question is, does the executive branch have the capacity <laughs> to control immigration, regulated properly, in our view, the answer is no. The executive has literally lost control of the whole process now. Fraud is rampant. They don't, they don't have proper interior enforcement. They've tried to eliminate <coughs> state participation. It's all political, okay? This whole thing is, a, is, a, is, be, is degenerated into a political debate about who can galvanize the Latino vote. But what do you think about Jeff's? What do you think about Jeff's point about uh, uh, qualified foreign workers? That's his term. But there's no labor shortage in the United States. There are millions of Americans who need work. I've been following the so-called H-1 visa now, going on 25 years. The longer we allow and explain business, what that is for us, these for are temporary or non-immigrant visas that are supposed to be for highly skilled workers. Although in practice, they're not so highly skilled. But in in the end, what has, what has happened is that employers have become reliant on foreign students, foreign workers for various new applications emerging in growth industries, rather than working hard to reform American education. It's disequilibrating the normal recruitment process that would go on in a domestic society. And the longer we allow these businesses to continue to rely, I, frankly, I think given what's happening in our economy and our debt situation, it's not a foregone conclusion that the United States will be able to attract the best and the brightest much longer because our debt situation and our spending situation is going to create an enormous debt obligation for any new person coming into the society. I mean, we, we have some amazingly broad questions. This Congress will not pass immigration reform unless we see on the side of the, of the proponents of mass immigration a willingness to, to actually come forward with a dialogue to get some things done. Dan Stein, what should be uh, the legal route to becoming a citizen? Should it apply at all to people who are here illegally? What should be the process to those who are waiting to come into the country from outside, if there well, even people, should be a process? Well, if, if you want to craft new citizens, naturally you want to have a process where they come in and then over a period of time they learn the, the beauty of the American experiment, our political history, the ideas of the framers, political philosophy of the Federalist Papers would be nice. Maybe that's a little pie in the sky, Which but certainly learn, certainly learn 
English and, and, and history to the point where when they do come in for their interview five years later or three in some cases, they uh, can take the naturalization exam and do well and then they come to a very elaborate and very inspiring ceremony where they learn what it means to participate as so an office process, holder in a democracy. So that process should be done before they come to America? Well, now, I mean, the, well, there are going to be times when you want to adjust non-immigrants to permanent resident status and ultimately citizenship, but in the end, incentivizing law-breaking is really what the amnesty bill is all about and the reason why the legislation hasn't gone anywhere is because when you incentive we know a lot from 1986 Ronald Reagan signed the 1986 amnesty bill it didn't provide a boon of votes for Republicans in fact Latinos are voting heavily based on income and education levels not because of the immigration issue and in fact we saw Tremendous fraud rates in the 86 amnesty. We see a lot of fraud probably associated with DACA. That we is we not see true, we see with the educational attainment of the amnesty uh, levels in 1986 was extremely low, and 25 percent had more than six family members that they wanted to petition in. So in the end, there's a multiplier effect. Unless you unless you streamline the chain migration system I spoke about at the beginning to say, look, the primary alien gets a green card. You can bring spouse, unmarried, minor children, and that is it you want to go visit your aunt and uncle back home, you're going to have to go home and see them because then you can rationalize the system. Commission after commission after commission has said you have to do this and we can't seem to get it done.